Good morning and welcome to Valley Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We're so glad you've joined us this morning for our service that recognizes the Independence Day holiday. To open our service today, we're showing a video of Denise Smith reciting the poem, Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. Mr. Smith is a poet and performance artist from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'll put the link in the chat window in case anyone wants to watch it again later. I'm also going to include a link of a video of five of Frederick Douglass's descendants reading excerpts from his speech called What to a Slave is the Fourth of July, which has been widely shared on social media recently. But if you haven't seen it, Take time out today to watch it. Now, we'll watch the video, Let America Be America Again. Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes. Let America Be America Again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America was never America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme, that any man be crushed by one above. It was never America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free, equality in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor, white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean, hungry yet today, despite the dream, beaten yet today. Oh, pioneers, I am the man who never got ahead. I am the poorest worker, bartered through the years yet. I am the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a surf of kings who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turn that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I am the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home, for I am the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lay, and torn from black Africa's strand to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me, surely not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shot down when we strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the hopes we've held and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has yet been and yet must be the land 
where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on people's lives, we must take back our land again. America, oh yes, I say it plain. America was never America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America will be out of the rake and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graph, of stealth and lies. We, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain. All, all the stretch of these great green states and make America again. I invite you to light a chalice with us, and if you have one, and join me as we say our opening words together. We kindle this flame, symbol of our faith, for the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of love, which calls us to work for justice. My name is Barbara and I'm today's service leader. Our settled minister, the Reverend Dr. Andy Burnett, is out of the pulpit and will be back next week. I'm sharing the service today with our beloved worship associate, Noel Hyman. We want to be in a kind of dialogue about our theme for this month, which is harmony. But given the current state of our lives, we're approaching the topic from the flip side, disharmony. Hopefully, by flipping harmony, we can find out more about the importance of harmony. I'm honored to partner with Noelle on this service because she's a searcher and a thinker and is challenging herself to learn the history that isn't taught in schools about the systematic and systemic oppression of Black, Brown, and Indigenous people of color. Those of you who have been around BUU for any length of time know that I've led the 4th of July service for many years. It's been my goal in those services and sermons to educate and challenge the supremacy of whiteness. For example, the first year I talked about white privilege and included some items from the Peggy McIntosh list. Another year, I talked about the enslaved poet Phyllis Whitney and another year about the overview effect that's experienced by astronauts who look at the pale blue dot that is Earth and realize the folly of division and separation among its peoples. Last year, it was about the possibility of rebuilding after a tsunami and so on. I believe it is important for white people to learn from each other about racism and oppression instead of relying only on our black friends to educate us. The one thing I've done every year is to read the Declaration of Independence. And every year I have struggled with that action because while it represents my Unitarian Universalist values, it does not represent reality. Usually, I read an abbreviated version of it, but many years ago, I invited one of our then members, who was an expert on the Declaration of Independence, to read it in full, including the crimes of the king. And he also provided historical explanation for some of the more obscure crimes. It was very enlightening. So this year, it's no exception, but in place of a sermon, we're going to read the full Declaration of Independence. And like that service many years ago, we're including crimes, but we're detailing crimes of our democracy thus far. 
and how instead of harmony it purported to sustain, it has instead created disharmony that is meant to benefit only some of its constituents. You'll forgive me if our list is incomplete, as there are so many, and some are only parenthetically apparent in others. Now, I'll invite Noelle to present her welcome. Thank you, Barbara. I'm honored to be able to participate in a, in a discussion of a subject that has labored unresolved for over 400 years but with more momentum and more backing than I've ever seen in my lifetime. On July 5th, 1852, 68 years ago to this day, Frederick Douglass, abolitionist, social reformer, orator, who had escaped the clutches of American slavery, spoke to the Rochester Ladies Anti-Slavery Society. He spoke of the disconnect, the dissonance, the disharmony of the country's celebration of freedom and independence, while at the same time they owned the bodies and the work of men, women, children, and future children whom they enslaved. About Independence Day, Douglas said, I am not included within the pale of glorious anniversary. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. In your national tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wail of millions whose chains, heavy and grievous yesterday, are today rendered more intolerable by the jubilee shouts that reach them." Unquote. The disconnect, the dissonance, the disharmony of the framers of the Declaration of Independence on the one hand, declaring as the foundation of our democracy that all men are created equal, while at the same time denying that equality to men, women, and children whom they stole from Africa, while at the same time driving out from their lands the indigenous people, declaring that all men are created equal while creating a country funded by slavery, the consequences of which, hundreds of years later, we have not recovered nor overcome. When the video of George Floyd came to light simultaneously with the video of the white woman using both racism and her privilege to threaten a black man based on a lie she told to 911, I like you was distraught yet again at the reminder that the beautiful ideals of our country, the vision I believe in, are not reality. And I recognize the privilege of needing to be reminded of that while others are, are experiencing systemic oppression every day. In my anger and despair at my country at that time, reminded that America is still not the country it proudly pro proclaims, my friend shared the words of Valerie Cower, Sikh activist who spoke in 2018 when protesting for the reunification of families who had come here as refugees and were then cruelly and violently separated. I will end my welcome today with her words regarding America and hope and the sometimes sinking feeling that its visions and ideals are dead. What if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? What if America is not dead, but a country that is waiting to be born? What if the story of America is one long labor what if all of our grandfathers and grandmothers are standing behind us now, those who survived occupation and genocide, slavery and Jim Crow, detentions and political assault? What if they are whispering in our ears, you are brave? What if this is our nation's greatest transition? What does the midwife tell us to do? Breathe. And then push. Let us sing together with Katie Seifert leading the music and David Berry playing piano, Building a New Way.
Bodwin, I'm your director of faith formation and today I want to share with you a book based on the 1925 poem I Too Sing America by Langston Hughes. Um, illustrator Brian Collier has put together pictures to go with the poem so I want to share this with you today. I Too Sing America. I and the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well. And grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, Eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. And I want to point out to you, did you notice that when Brian Collier made these paintings, he overlaid lightly the American flag over some of these pictures. But notice in the last one, how the boy is peeling the stripes apart and peering through, how we can see him so clearly. Have a great day. Thank you, Marcy. And we want to say thank you to all of you who have kept up their giving during these times. If you would like to give, you can either text your donation to the number on the screen 
or you could even mail us a check. However, if you are not able to continue your giving, please know that all we need from you is to let us know. We want to be there for each other in these difficult times. As always, thank you for all the many forms of your generosity. Now, we shift our focus to the hauntingly beautiful song and prayer filled with loving kindness. This song from our hymnal is a sung expression of the Buddhist prayer known as the Metta Sutta. Metta means loving kindness, and the prayer is an expression, a visualization, and an openness to loving kindness toward ourselves, toward another, and toward us all. In other words, it is a prayer for loving kindness to be the experience of all beings. What a perfect practice for these times. Now, we'll sing along with Katie, filled with loving kindness. Please join me in this prayer, this song, singing filled with loving kindness. begin a moment of meditation, I invite you to close your eyes and to take a deep breath in and a breath out and to bring your awareness to any feelings or emotions that you have, that you're feeling right now and that they may be physical in your body. So with your eyes closed, Maybe search the regions, the regions 
of those sensations, of those emotions present within your physical body. And if those are positive feelings, I invite you to breathe into them, to expand their borders. If they're negative feelings and you want to hold on to them, you're welcome to, but if you're ready to release them because they're no longer serving you, I invite you to exhale away any of those emotions that you're ready to release. Let us sit with whatever emotions that we choose to keep present and to be present with our breath. We'll now hear a recording from our VUU choir there is a balm in Gilead. The title of our service is Kill Your Masters, which I borrowed from a rap group called Run the Jewels, and they borrowed it from the powerful advice of Audre Lorde, who wrote, for the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may temporarily allow us to beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change." End quote. So what can we do to bring about this genuine change? Where do we start? If we take Ms. Lord's advice, we must get serious and challenge the very institutions that form the foundation of our democracy. We must hold them up to the light and fix where they have gone wrong. In order to begin righting the wrongs of our democracy, I thought it might be interesting, even helpful, to use the wisdom of the founders of the Declaration of Independence who listed the crimes of the king. So in the version that we present to you today, we put together a draft list of the crimes of our democracy. We encourage you to add your ideas for how to grow the list. We have left the remainder of the text of the Declaration of Independence mostly intact, but we have taken the liberty of substituting a few words here and there. The text of the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, 
a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among people, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light or transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these states and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. Here begin the crimes of our democracy. The history of the present United States democracy is a history of repeated injury and usurpation, all having indirect object, the establishment of an absolute tyranny over black, brown, and indigenous people of color. To prove this, let facts be submitted to the world. For violently enslaving millions of humans. For training children that some lives do not matter. For the misuse of science to create and sustain a racial hierarchy resulting in the abject dehumanization of anyone defined as other. For the violence of the Jim Crow years. For excluding black Americans from fully partaking in the economy by implementing barriers such as redlining and racial covenants and pay differentials. For using segregation and school funding laws to make a good education nearly impossible for black children. For the taking of indigenous children from their parents to raise them to be white in manners and in religion, and later for taking Latino children from their refugee parents. For the criminaliz criminalization of teenage black girls and the mass incarceration of black boys and men. For fostering a narrative of beauty that is exclusionary and for requiring the use of the English language which has resulted in the loss of many languages. For, for the systematic genocide of the sophisticated indigenous people, followed by their annihilation through numerous means to seize their land. For the complicity of religious Christian organizations that theologically supported the racial hierarchy. For failing to protect the cornerstones of democracy, especially voting for the rhetoric of the freedom of the intellectual individual that is inherently selfish and discourages people from making decisions and taking actions for the good of the whole. For uplifting profit and abandoning love in human relations. Finally, for continuing to fortify the tyranny of white supremacy that disallows the founding promise of our democracy, which is, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness 
to be fulfilled by all. So ends our draft list of the crimes of our democracy. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our leaders. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We've reminded them of the circumstances of our emigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity, consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in necessity, which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in friends, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by authority of the good people of these states solemnly publish and declare that these United States are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to white supremacy and that all political connection between them and white supremacy is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our love, and our sacred honor. Blessed be. Now, please join us in the closing hymn, One More Step. say our departing words of commitment to each other while we extinguish the chalice. Though we extinguish the chalice, our connection to each other and this community remains. May its light guide us this week as we walk the path of justice, speak words of love, and fill our world with compassion until we meet again. Go in peace, dear friends, and remember to kill your masters. At this time, you're welcome to leave the Zoom meeting, or if you want to stay and chat for a few minutes, just stay on the meeting and then click yes when the pop-up window for the breakout session occurs. That will appear momentarily. Thank you so much 
for your presence today. We see you, we hear you, we love you. Blessed be.